Hello everyone, Charmant Senior here. Today I'm showing you how to set up a distributed cacti service model um, using remote pollers and a central cacti server. Now, cacti as of version one and above supports this feature natively. Uh, and in a lot of my videos, I talk about setting up cacti, uh, assuming that it's a single instance, but on larger deployments, you would never rely on a single instance if you're talking about hundreds of devices that you're monitoring, you also want that for redundancy purposes. And um, depending on your network setup, if it's in multiple locations, you might want a local polar uh, to collect the data so that things like latency and jitter uh, over, um, over public networks or over your transport network don't interfere with the results that you get. Um, from pinging the devices or uh, reachability checks. So in this case, I have a cacti set up uh, and uh, with a three server setup. And so there's the main cacti polar, uh, cacti polar one and cacti polar two. And these are the devices that we're monitoring. So in this case, I just drew three routers. Um, so SNMP traffic would come from the remote pollers and the main polar itself going to the device that it is uh, associated to. So for instance, Cacti Polar 1 can be assigned this device. Cacti Polar, uh, the main polar can be as assigned this one. And Cacti Polar 2, if you haven't gotten it by now, would be uh, assigned this device to poll. So uh, picture this. Um, you have uh, you have devices uh, scattered across the country, say east to west. Now, um, on the western side of the country, you don't want something central, say uh, in the middle of uh, your country, uh, polling something all the way on the opposite side. So what you would do is drop a polar maybe closer, which will reduce the amount of latency uh, across those links to get to that device. Uh, and this is just a matter of physics uh, problem, right? Because the further away you are from that device, the higher your latency um, will go up. And that doesn't necessarily reflect what's actually going on with those devices. And so uh, that that's, uh, fixes the geographical issue. And then, of course, if you're monitoring hundreds of devices, you'd want to split them up between multiple servers, and that's just for load uh, and, and all that stuff. So we're going to replicate this. Uh, I have set up the three servers. I use Lino now to do my labs. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm just, I am able to tear, uh, I'm able to build up and tear down as quick as possible. It's better than having to do all the virtualization uh, locally and I, you know, it's a few bucks. So uh, for those of you who like uh, to do this kind of sub tear thing, uh, bring things up, tear them down, check out Linode. Um, or there's so many other VPS providers that do this now. Um, you know, so anyways, no more tangents. Let's get to it. Um, so far, all I've done is downloaded the necessary cacti uh, installation. Now, uh, the way, going back to the diagram, these are all full cacti installations, meaning the full cacti uh, software package will be installed along with all the SNMP libraries and, uh, and everything needed to run cacti on each one of these servers. The difference is, is that there is an SQL connection that's maintained between these servers. And uh, the SQL database is replicated between the main polar. So any, any changes that happen on the main polar get propagated to the two polars. Uh, because of that, you need a bi-directional uh, SQL connection, which we'll set up. And uh, what happens is, is that these two servers do not, uh, they do not hold on to the graph files. 
In fact, the main polar will hold on to the graph files themselves, the RRA files. The only time the cacti polars, the remote polars, <clears throat> will hold on to graphs is when they are un unable to reach the main polar. In that case, what they'll do is they'll update the RRA files locally until the main polar comes back up online. Uh, or it could be that the main polar is online, just the SQL connection for whatever reason is broken and you'd have to look into it. Uh, all three of these servers will need to be in sync, of course, and we'll talk about that as we get going. So what I've done, uh, just for the interest of time, is I've done the main polar and the cacti um, polar one uh, server. I've downloaded all the code um, running my installation wizard script, um, but I haven't gone through the full setup. So <clears throat> all that's left is actually just go through the web wizard. And so the first thing I'll do here is install the main polar by going through the setup wizard. Now, if you'd like to know how to do this manually um, or how to install Cacti, then uh, you can go to one of my previous videos. Uh, I have a few about installing Cacti and going through this menu. I'm just going to go through it quick. So this is the part that pertains to what we're talking about today. And that is uh, selecting the type of installation. <clears throat> so this will be our primary server. So be sure to select new primary server. Click next, next. And we'll have, we'll go ahead and install it. Okay, so Cacti is now installed. There's a few, uh, few tweaks here. Now, Cacti in a distributed model uh, and large installations uh, recommend recommends using Spine as a polar. Now, Spine, unlike uh, the CMD.php, Spine is written in C. Um, and on top of that, communicates directly with the database um, through the spine.com file. Unlike the cmd.php, um, which is interpreted and then uses Cacti uh, to the, the Cacti configuration files to talk to the database. So we just have to quickly um, change or, or update the configuration file for spine on the main folder. And that's normally located in user local spine Etsy. So this is a new install. So I'll be moving the spine.conf.this to spine.conf. Now I know that the username is cacti password is cacti. Obviously in production, you'll definitely want to bulk up on security, use best uh, password practices and stuff like that. But for uh, our demo, to make it easy, we're not doing that. Okay. So that sets up spine and we can save this. All right. So now, we have to set up the database starting at the main polar. Okay, so the main polar again is central to um, uh, to this whole thing, right? So all the remote polars will need to talk to the main polar in order to um, in order to make all of this work. So we will. Set up the database. Now I'm getting the SQL commands because I don't always remember them off the top of my head uh, from my script. Uh, I'll leave them in the comment section or sorry, the video description below. Okay.
Okay. So, in this section, what we'll be doing is uh, allowing the remote host uh, to be able to log in to uh, the main server. So, the remote polar's IP. Like so. So essentially what we're saying is grant all privileges for cacti to the user cacti. Sorry, so um, grant all privileges on the database name cacti to the user cacti coming in from this IP identified by the password cacti. Again, security is not the main goal for this demo, but in production, you would never use username cacti, password cacti. It's definitely a no-no, but uh, again, to make this easy, um, we're just using that for now. Okay, so now this is complete. We'll move over to Remote Polar 1. Okay, now, We'll have to do something similar to uh, to this database here, and that is we're going to allow the main polar IP to be able to talk to the remote polar's database as well. Okay, and the only thing that changes here is the IP address that we're coming from. So again, uh, explain this command. We're granting all privileges uh, on the cacti database to the user cacti coming from this IP address identified by password cacti. Okay, now there is something slightly different that we have to do here. A couple things. Go over to the var www.html cacti directory. You'll see that there's a config.php file in there. We'll have to modify the config.php file to tell it that we're going to be connecting to a remote database. So up here, if you've seen my previous videos, uh, this is how you configure the local database. And this is where we can be configuring the remote database. So uncomment the following lines. So the username is cacti, password cacti. We'll change the local host to the remote database IP address and save that. <clears throat> we'll also go to user local spine Etsy. And again, this being all new config We'll have to move the spine.conf.dist to spine.conf. And also, <clears throat> we'll have to set up the local user. So it's cacti, cacti, the remote IP. And that also uses cacti, cacti. Notice how this spine will even talk to the remote database as well um, directly <clears throat> so um, its results go and go right to the database which is much much quicker we'll save that and now we will go over to the web installation wizard for the remote polar IP something uh, different here and that is that the installation 
will automatically jump to remote polar configuration. Uh, that's because we have the, um, the remote database uh, information set, so the installer is smart enough to know that. I did forget one thing. This will be a temporary thing, so be sure that once you're done with the installation to go back. And that is to enable uh, full write permissions for the config.php. And this is only for the installation. Okay. Um, you can actually um, just have it by, um, by enabling write for, uh, for the Apache user or 777 just briefly. <clears throat> so now click test connection, which will test to be sure that it can, it has connectivity to the remote server and click next. <clears throat> and now next. Give me a second here. Okay. Now, um, just finish off the installation. Confirm installation. And there we go. So now the remote server is set up. And you know that you're in the remote server when you get this big fat message saying that you're in the remote data collector. Okay. Now, Let's go back to the main polar under data collection, data collectors. You'll see that a new polar has shown up. So click on the new polar. The first thing you have to do is uh, put either the DNS host name or the IP address of this polar. And then we can name it remote polar one, put a note, something like this polar is in server rack 101. So you'll see that the host name is set to local. Um, and so we'll have to change that obviously to the real host name and hit test configuration, test connection. So as you can see, the connection from the main polar to the remote polar um, is is successful connecting to a database, uh, which is really important that you make sure that that happens. Hit save, and now, oops, over to data collection and then data collectors. You'll see that the two main polars are there. Now select the checkbox. To select both and do a full sync. Now it went from heartbeat to idle. So one other thing is you should also name the main polar uh, for the host name. Put the uh, IP address. This gets propagated to the database, which is used also by the remote data collector to know where it is. Now, obviously, in your production environment, use DNS, which is way better than using IP, because if you ever have to change an IP and everything's pointed to that IP, it is a pain in the butt. But if you have DNS, just update the record and away you go. So, now, um, we have, well, just a local device here, uh, but let's, let's add a couple of uh, IPs that we can ping. So let's say Google DNS, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 now, polar association. You see that I have two polars now, the main polar or the remote polar. Let's say this one I want to stick here on the local polar. <clears throat> not using the, uh, we're not using SNMP for this. Create. And then let's create some graphs for this. Oh darn, I know what I did here. 
I made the template cacti stats. Okay. Um, let us then change this cacti stats to none because it's going to use that template with all the data sources, which we don't want. Or I might just delete. Yeah, so I'm just sorry. I'm just going to delete this device. Make it easier. Okay. Google DNS. Main polar. I won't use. I won't use a template this time. <laughs> Hit create. Now let's create some graphs. <clears throat> so for this, we'll be using. Because uh, it's ping, the Unix ping latency. Create. That creates a graph. And we'll place this on the default tree. Okay. And next, we'll add another device. And this time, we'll name it. Oops. Level 3 uh, DNS, which is 4.2.2.2. It helps when you don't hit enter. Okay, so not in use, but we'll switch this to remote polar one and hit save. And we'll add the ping latency graph And we will place this on the tree as well. Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for the polar, this will now, um, and I, I can't believe I did it again. <laughs> I apologize. I, I selected a template for even this one as the cacti stats which um, will create graphs for the local machine. Uh, not to worry, I also did the ping latency. <clears throat> um, but yes, yeah, so now that the poll is running, you'll see that, um, that we're starting to get graphs. So this is the primary, which is the main, uh, the, the main polar. And the secondary one now working. Uh, if you were to do a TCP dump on this bo this box, you'll see ICMP packets being sent for 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and 4.2.2.2 um, sitting on the main polar. Now, uh, now if you want to see. Uh, what devices are on what polar you can do data so remote polar one 4.2.2.2 is the remote polar. so i actually apologize i reversed them so 4.2.2.2 is being uh pulled or pinged from the remote server and 8.8.8.8 is from the main polar <clears throat> now say you wanted to change that so you want to change that. Uh, it could be, you know, for load balancing purposes or troubleshooting purposes. Not a big issue. All you got to do is come up here for Polar Association. Select Remote Polar 1. And hit Save. Now, I do want to illustrate one thing here. 
<clears throat> and this is that physics problem we was talking about in uh, in the beginning. Look at remote polar one to eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, less than uh, one millisecond. Now, when I go to the main polar and hit save, I'm getting one and a half milliseconds. Now, that's great. <coughs> I apologize. Uh, that's great. Um, but let's say in reality, um, you know, in, in, in a production environment, this box, uh, main polar, was 10 milliseconds, and the remote polar was 2 milliseconds because of distance. It would, it would really uh, be advisable to move that device closer, to, on, on the polar closer, to get better numbers as to what's going on. So that's that um, physics, physics thing in, in real life here. We, we see it. Now, uh, there are a couple things that come with uh, having a distributed model. And that is under the performance section, you'll notice that boost is enabled and on-demand uh, RRDs, meaning that um, when you click on a graph is when the image updates. Uh, so you can have this off uh, on a single um, deployment, but on a distributed deployment, we don't update the RRDs, uh, you know, all the time. And you can select that behavior. So, for instance, how often do you want the RRDs updated? Uh, the lowest is 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, all of the graphs will be updated regardless if they've been clicked on or not. That doesn't mean that when a user clicks on a graph, you're missing 30 minutes of data. No. Um, that, that would that would trigger cacti to update that graph with uh, in, in terms of the image but the data is still there okay and uh, so now what we'll do is add another polar uh, the third polar uh, to this to the system so you can see <clears throat> and that I haven't touched that server yet. So uh, I'll show you my script as well, which makes uh, getting started pretty simple. So the first thing I'll do is install git and unzip, which are needed for my script. Now, uh, this my script is located on my GitHub page. Um, I'll include the link in the description. So next thing I'll do is oops, clone the script. And now I'll run the cacti install wizard. And because I'm using 1.2.4 for all the other deployments, I'll use 1.2.4 for this one. And of course, we have to use Spine. So I will tell the script to download Spine. Now, a couple of other side notes about um, using multiple polars. Uh, not all of the Cacti plugins are compatible with this multipolar setup. Uh, the ones that are, which really are the most important ones, is Thresholds, Monitor, uh, Intro Page, um, which is a, the plugin for a dashboard. <clears throat> uh, those are the ones that I know of for sure work with uh, distributed models. Um, so, you will just uh, you'll just uh, use those, and my script will automatically download them if you select uh, select it to, or uh, just double check on the Cacti plugins page on which ones are um, good for setups with multiple polars. Okay. 
So I'll just pause the video for a moment and uh, once it's done, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so the, uh, the script is done. So first thing I'll do is just quickly change the host name here. Just That doesn't change, by the way, that doesn't change the um, host name uh, permanently. You'd have to do that in the host name file. But after we're done with this video, these servers are going to be deleted anyway. So uh, no need for me anyways. Um, now, <clears throat> as we did in the second, uh, sorry, in the first remote polar, uh, we'll have to modify the config.php file um, for cacti. Okay, so I know that the remote is cacti. And the database is cacti, so I just got to get that IP address again. Okay. Next, go over to spine. and enter the remote database host. Save. Let me get that command again. And as we did with the other one, we have to allow the other, the, the main polar to be able to talk to um, this remote polar. And we'll actually have to do the same uh, again on the main polar. Uh, to allow this user because this is coming from a different address so we'll go to cacti main polar root. Oop. I will fix that later okay. okay and that will select the polar 2 address Go over to the main polar. There we go. So again, remember the importance of these remote polars being able to talk to each other. This is how they sync on the data. At least the main polar needs to be able to maintain a bi-directional um, communication over SQL uh, with the remote polars. They have to, so the main polar needs to talk to the remote polar. The remote polar needs to talk to the main polar. Okay, now that that's done, we can go to this installation wizard. And in case you forgot, we should expect that this polar um, setup should automatically detect that uh, it's going to be set up as a re remote polar. And so it did. And what's the one thing that we have to do? Yep. We have to make sure that the config.php file 
is uh, writable. Okay. So again, var www.html cacti include. So you can do 777 like I did in the last um, in the last uh, demo or change the config the PHP permission uh, so that Apache owns it and refresh. Test connection, good. So we'll do next, 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 confirm. And now the second polar is ready to go. Now going back to the main polar, data collection, data collectors, you'll see that the new polar here the third one is in new polar status. So get the IP. And as we did before, put the host name of the remote polar, test the connection, connection is successful, save. Now you see that it's in heartbeat mode. Select the polars, actually you can even select just the one polar and do a full sync. Actually, I am. I apologize. I believe you do actually have to select all of the polars to do the full sync. Yep, that's right. Uh, it's either either one of two things. Um, uh, now, this is the part where I'm a little fuzzy on. If you can select just the one polar um, to do the full sync or if you have to select all three uh, I could have just uh, did the sync and didn't wait long enough with my impatience so um, you can just kind of experiment there I'll experiment it if I notice uh, that uh, I can select just the one and do the full sync uh, I'll let you know by updating the video and with that we have set up a distributed cacti environment using remote polars uh, and um, uh, setting up the MySQL backend for it to work. I hope this video was uh, very helpful. The reason why I created it is that uh, I remember having to set this up the first time myself and there wasn't many resources so uh, I hope that this helps you. If you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and feel free to reach out to me uh, at Sean at SeanMancini.com or on my website www.SeanMancini.com Talk to you guys later. Thank you.